Until I am drunk, 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 till 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 I am drunk. of everything came out. Because another man was seated there with suit. He looks like a papa too. But something happened. When prayer sat, <laughs> when they started praying, he did like this with his suit. And he was looking. And I realized the difference between fathers. He was adjusting his suit until he could not bear the atmosphere he had to work out. And I saw Papa standing there praying. True definition of the Father. Please, can you put your hands together as we welcome us from Apostle Peter? How about you? Apostle Peter, thank you. Apostle Peter, thank you. Please, I hope you see what you do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, a lot has been going on. Like I said, if up till now you are not blessed, it's not because anybody here is wrong, it's because you are wrong. Everyone here will not stand here to minister to you if he's not ministered. And for adventure, even if you felt you were not built enough, if we give you the microphone, a grace will superimpose you to ensure that you align to the prayer that has gone so far, to ensure that this order is maintained. As such, we will advance. Today is the last day. 
like I've always said, whether you have been praying or you refuse to pray, whether you have been listening or you refuse to listen, whether you like it or not, your prayer cannot stop us from giving tomorrow. You don't have that capacity. You lack that stature. In case you do, you will hinder it. So today is the last. You can follow up for Kochila. You know me? <laughs> if you have smoked before, there is an association. And sometimes if you don't have the money to buy, you will wait for your friend to finish smoking. The remaining last lifeline, that one can kill you. That's why we call it killer. But that one, you can be so broke that you want to just to be intoxicated. Just so that you can be high. You will want to take that one. At least for the moment. And that is why they die early. But the truth is this. Now you still have the killer. Just that it's going to be very hard for you to be able to gain enough for you to survive. I don't know how you are going to do. But if you like, continue to sleep. If you like today, if you want to play, some of you ran and went to the mountain top. You know who can't climb there that night. You can do anything you want to do. We will do and leave. But after some years, you will be the one that will be running after us to pray for you every day. And at that time, class was saying, we will not be there. Can you pray in one minute again and say, Father, help me to utilize this moment. Help me to utilize this moment. Help me to utilize this moment. Help me not to be a disadvantage to the kingdom of life. Help me. Devil does not function just like that. He requires men. Devil is not as powerful as you think he is. He's powerful to the degree to which the men, the empowered are. Same thing with God. God may seem powerless because men were not empowered. God may be handicapped in the region because there were no men. That we are strong enough in him that they can be strong in society. Anytime you see God walk upon the place, it's not because he is powerful, no. It was because some people just seek to align. You are not as weak as you think you are. You have just faith to align to a supreme order. Amen. Can you have your seat? Tonight, being the last night of our convergence, We'll do a lot. We want to give you some few appetizer this morning so that you can survive. I don't know. I believe my voice is loud enough for everybody to hear, including you people that are sitting on the overflow. But if you felt you are too far from the kingdom, please come close to the kingdom. Because I want to drop this microphone so that we can have. I think that's the last battery you mean, so that we can have it to use at night. That's to say, it's left for you to pay attention. I always say, I find it very hard answering people's questions. I don't like answering questions. Go and listen to messages. Many of you have problems. Your problem is that your Bible is with you. You have never opened it. Your problem is that you had you. One guy met me one time in school. He took my laptop. He copied almost everything that is my laptop, almost 500 gig. And I thought that guy would go and start studying. I never knew that he followed through one of those house boys. Room two. He collected Indian films worth 20 gig. American film worth 30 gig. Chinese film worth 50 gig. Added Telemundo, add all these Philippines, seen this film. And he was dwelling on them again and again. And I wonder, why did he pass through my corridors when he has not given up on himself? The things you look upon, the things you eat, the things you feed upon is what you become. Whether you like it or not, God cannot just walk a magic around your life. If that's how it is, you must have done it with other people. Your priorities must have to matter. No man does this thing by magic. No. Paul will always say I labor more than they all. Everybody has the grace of God. The difference is sometimes it's part of the labor. So pay attention. A lot has been going on here. You can decide to do whatever you want to do. The day you need it, you will look for it. You will seek for it. 
I remember then in Zadia, some people come to Apostle and ask him questions. He said, I think this is this message. He said, no. He said, go, they should go and get it. They will meander the other side like that and pass and go away. And they will still come and ask the same question again and again and again. Why? They don't want to pay the price. Sometimes the price you have to pay is not in the and Kubo. No. It's your time. So please, pay attention. Take the back. Um, well, briefly, Timothy, I got your this thing. Please remind me later. Briefly, we will look at something. You now I told you Kwanzaa has a way of giving topics. But I trust God that we do justice to it tentatively. Can you help me appreciate my friends and my other cousin? The other one ran away, but this is also my cousin. <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, I'm supposed to talk to you about partnership with the Holy Spirit. But like I always will do, I teach tentatively, I will not just go direct to that. Because I don't just only talk to you. I talk to the body of Christ. You are just part of it. If I don't deal with it very well, I will still ask the question again and again. So it's better I do it in such a way that I can be meal enough for everybody. Is that okay? So we are going to start from a basic of understanding the levels of encounters and we will journey to partnering with the Holy Spirit. The reason why we should partner with the Holy Spirit is not just for the partnering sake. It's to grant unto your encounters so that it can be included among the column and among the numbering of them who the Lord is utilizing within the seasons in this time. The first thing I have to bring to your notice is this. You must understand that what God works in diverse ways. And God may not always work in a spectacular manner. What that means is that many more times you always despise people that God is going to use to transform you. And the reason why you would do that is simply because you are not discerning enough. If you have seen any man that has been able to gain any level of encounter, whether in God or encounter via men, it's because he was able to discern. Jesus Christ himself was powerful. But while upon the face of the earth, he could not do as much to certain people because they could not discern him. Do you know that you may believe that paraventure, if you are in the time that Jesus Christ was upon the face of the earth, you will have been part of them that will follow him as apostles. It will amaze you that you will be part of the people that will say crucify him. Why? Because it is possible that you may also not be able to discern the coming of the Messiah. You may not also be able to discern that he is the Christ. The same way that today you speak against all kinds of people, you insult all kinds of people, not knowing fully well that they are a career of the personality of Christ in them. And this mistake that you believe that those guys did in that time is what we are repeating again and again. The funny thing about life is that history will always repeat itself. I've always said here yeah, that whatever you preach will come against you. And the day it come against you, you understand you are not discerning enough and you are not even careful enough. Do not be foolish. There is an advantage in understanding and discerning the body of Christ. And you must understand that as powerful as you are, you are just but part of the body. And no matter how powerful you think you are, there is nothing that God is doing with you that is new. There is nothing you are doing today that some people have not done it before. It will amaze you that there are people that pray more than us if you read church history. There are people that have had a lot of revelation more than all of us. All the weave of doctrine that you see coming today, all kinds of confusion are not new at all. They are just things that men went and dig them out because they lazy for so long and somehow, as they brought them, they become new. And because in the body of Christ, a lot of people have what we call itching ears. Everything seems appealing unto them. So that it sounds strange, that it sounds news, it looks as though it's actually God. But I have seen a lot of good that is not God. And it will require some level of discernment for you to be able to discern which good is God. And which good is not God. The truth is this. You may not be able to do that discernment if you yourself are not genuine God. It's impossible for you to be able to identify what is fake, what is genuine if you yourself you are not genuine. It's impossible for me to give you money to go and buy me something that is original when you have never asked the texture of the original. Do you understand what I'm saying now? 
So the reason why God will have to ensure that you are right yourself is because you can be the parameter where which you can measure other people. I get what I'm saying now. God works intentionally, deliberate with us to ensure that He brings us to a point where we become a standard enough, not actually pointing onto us, but pointing us, pointing to us, then pointing to God. The end product in Himself was not Jesus Christ. The end product is that Jesus Christ Himself revealed you to the Father. I get what I'm saying now. But it is important for you to be able to understand the Father sufficiently well if you don't pass through a vehicle. The same way that, like I said, that God may not be able to be taught to you in classroom, but you will still be able to require men and women that will usher you to bring you to a point where they can put a lot of structuring that you may be able to encounter God. And that is why encounter is by voter if you must be able to encounter God and walk with God upon the face of the earth. The diversity in the body of Christ as God has done it is to be able to ensure that the body of Christ has balance and stability. Because it is impossible for God to work with only one man enough. It's impossible. Jesus Christ himself had to come and live and die so that via ascension, death, burial, and resurrection, all of us can be part of the same. Is that okay now? The same way that after that was done, he ensured that he distributed himself among many others so that each and every one carried diverse kinds of dimension then it's possible for you to come to a point that you may not be complete enough as a representative of Jesus if all what you know is part of an operation. If you read the book of Ephesians very well, you will understand that the five-fold operations as given in offices, they themselves do not want to stand alone. As good as an apostle may be, he may have to be able to receive the structural impactation of an evangelist. As good as an evangelist may be, he will require the structural impactation of a prophet. As good as a prophet may be, he may require the structural impactation of a pastor. That all of them should bring you to the full functionality of the maturity of the personality of Christ. It is in that that you can join effectively well in God and function more like God. Jesus Christ being our pattern man came to let us understand that he wasn't an apostle. He wasn't actually just but a saint one. Come to represent the kingdom of God. In all in him is encapsulated the dimension and the diversity of all of these offices. Why then do you choose sight? It's because you are not able to discern. And that is why in the days and the time when the trials and the persecution come for you to survive as a pastor, you may run away. Because all what you know about yourself was either a prophet or an apostle. The reason why you continually have encounter and you must have to discern the body of Christ is because there are certain level of operation that God may be doing with you that may not be in your father or be in the one kind of apostle or being one kind of a prophet, or whatever you call it. And if you don't know how to discern that, such kind of encounters will not be able to be done for you so that you can be able to be around. Encounter is the system that God initiates to ensure that he transfers information to us. Encounter is a system that includes you among the Godhead. Encounter is what orchestrates impactation. And when that is done, impactation and transfer the same kind of spirit, the same kind of knowledge, the same kind of understanding, the same kind of put you in the right pathway so that you can join your right. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Paul bring that understanding to us when you look at the church in Corinthians. From 1 Corinthians 12, he begins to let them to understand that there are diversities of the operations of God. That nothing actually really, really stands alone. But our challenge is simple. Everybody has caught a need. And it's good that you catch a need that is good but that may be dangerous that may be injurious to your health spiritually because being a product of many graces is an advantage because all the diversities of the graces available in the body of Christ is an advantage unto you the man that tells you to remain only with him listen to only him is trying to scam you him himself was not actually a product of one man I assure you him himself if he is genuine enough to tell you the truth is actually a land already born as two fathers Kenneth Copeland and E. Adeboe. And you cannot question him with all your doctrine of fatherhood. You see, the problem is this. Your result can validate a claim. I get what I'm saying now. And one of the reasons why this is established in the body of God is because men work with God and they prove certain things that you don't know. So they establish foundation. Now, those foundations become the structure where we you ride. If I come and something new is evolved, I can set the foundation, set the pace, and set the parameters I ride. You cannot enter that realm, so you follow through that pathway. It will take you a long time for you to be able to journey through that. At least attend to my level before you cannot begin to edit the things I've written. Idaosa was the one that tells us, never criticize a man you have not done times two of what he has done, no matter how fake he is. Why? 
because you lack the potency in the realm of the spirit he has more stature than you don't even try it whether it's in divine whether it's in demonic what i need to understand is this god takes pleasure in journeying with men but how far are you willing to journey with god will depend upon how much you want to partner with him the tenacity and the potency of god is uncompromisable what i mean by that is that you cannot be able to factor effectively well the strength of god the strength of god has expressed to you to the degree to which you can be able to contain prayer is one of the way you enlarge your capacity but you must understand that your mindset can also be a limitation as you enlarge your capacity praying you must have sufficient enough the mind of christ that can be able to contain the mind of god because the mind of god can only dwell in the mind of christ and simply it was because christ himself has been able to ensure that his mind was engineered enough his spirit has enough capacity to be able to contain god and represent god is that okay now how did he actually effectively do the things he do it was simply because he partnered with god everything that the bible says god this is not what you can relate with your mind try it the bible says god is spirit the bible says god is love the bible says god is light as i just let you understand this i know you're already confused already how do you talk to a spirit how do you talk to light how do you talk to love it becomes a challenge for you to be able to really really understand god all of these things are things that can be revealed unto you that is why a lot of time i realize the man that tried to bring light upon the face of the earth try a lot of time his story was a story of a failure that refused to fail that is how your journey in christianity will be for you to be able to understand the light you must fail thousands and thousands of times but i need you to understand that in your failure you will learn how it doesn't work in learning how it doesn't work it become an advantage for you to learn how it works your story in christianity is not complete without your failure stories your failure stories are part of the infrastructure that is why a lot of things written in scripture are the failures of men it's only we that it dictated our stories very well. When they tell you to write the story about your life, you tell us how much, much we ought to have conquered. We refuse to tell us the times you have failed. And that is why we don't have the fortitude and the strength to advance because we felt that we are in misalignment. A lot of times what you call your misalignment is part of the success story. I get what I'm saying now. So that is the reason why God will continually ensure that he encounter you on the liberty so that he can put you what? In check. You are not the first one to go out of balance. Encounters was what bring men in check. Although they partner with the Spirit of God, that does not automatically mean that they will not go haywire for some times. I get what I'm saying now. So you must understand that as you join in God, partnership is very important. But the aim of partnering with the Spirit of God is to bring you to a place of what? Encounters. But this encounter the Spirit of God does, it doesn't just do it just like that. No wonder many people have had the Holy Spirit for a very long time. Their life has not been relevant. They have neglected the thought that the encounter was just how much more you pray. Ah, we have a friend then on campus. My friend is a valiant in war. That guy can so pray. If I have seen a man that pray like that guy, there are not too many. I don't just want to call his name right now because it's going to be a challenge. But the truth is that those were people that train us and mentor us. One of the greatest fathers you know in the body of Christ saw that guy and said, come, I want you to walk with me. As of that time that everybody was clashing towards that father. That time he came to campus, our campus was the happening man. But this guy, because of the strength he has in him, he said, I don't need to work with you. The problem I had with that guy was simple. He could not be able to discern the body. A lot of times he would sit in his room. The Lord would show him the vision. Go to Koinonia. Go and just go and sit under the grace of Salma. He said, no, he doesn't need it. The Lord would tell him, go and read this book. He would say, he doesn't need it. He said, anything that cannot be revealed to him through the word of God cannot be God. He said, anything that cannot be revealed to him through the Bible cannot be God. He said, anything that, he said, nobody can come and tell him the Lord. He said, God cannot talk to him. He can't talk to anybody. As I'm talking to you right now, the guy is not in faith. The last time he met me, he said, can you pray for me? I said, the problem is this. You have become casualty of your inability to discern, although you are a strong man. Sometimes your strength in warfare is not the weapon you have. It's the strategy that you can be able to engage. I know about an army. They are not too strong as men think they are. But there was a strategy that they have. It's the strategy to make the enemies afraid. It's the strategy of them willing to die. So an entire army can come after them. As many as the army are, they know that everyone has a fear in them. They appetize the fear and ensure that without fear, they self-destruct. In biology, that's what we call apoptosis. It's possible for us to induce you to a point that you die on your own. Or you don't know. Many of you are dying on your own. There's no devil fighting anywhere. What those armies will do is simple. When they come before a great army to fight, 
The army will tell them, we have come to win you. How small you are. They will say, we do not come to win, we come to die. They were very small. But they knew that as long as they can prove to these people that they are not afraid of dying, those people will run away. So the simple thing they will do is that at least they know that few of them will have to sacrifice their life so that they, the country can have victory. The first soldier will come out, take a knife, slaughter his neck. Another one will come out, take another knife and choke himself. When those other guys see that, they know that these people, you come to win, I come to die. They know that somehow these are not normal men. They run away. Because they don't want to lose. They don't want they, they want to win, but they don't want to die. So they want to return back to the people at home. And no one among them actually do not want to return back. So no one is willing to come and die first. As a result of that, all of them are willing to run away. And that was why how those guys continue to win war. And they continue to win war. The truth is this. You must understand this journey that you must be willing to die at all times. Many more times the encounters come at the end of your cell. When you begin to pray, when I meet people, they tell me they pray for 10 hours, say, increase it to 30 hours, you won't die. You study for 5 hours, increase it. At the end of that, that is when you encounter the Lord. Because many more times, when you go the extra mile, that is when you'll be able to find the Lord. Your comfort is your disadvantage. That is why that angel will always measure a thousand cubits. You need to go deeper. You need to go deeper. How many of you learn how to swim on water that are shallow? It's frustrating. You may never be able to learn. You must drink the water several times. We will throw you in the deep so that you drink a little bit. You will drink again. A time is going to come. You will understand the mechanism. It will be educated within you. A man said that you don't teach a dog how to bark. You don't teach a bird how to fly. All of this is a natural inside of them. The same thing you too. There are a lot of things that are natural inside of you, but it requires any kind of environmental condition to make them to be activated. As you find yourself in a situation where you wonder, how did I do this? It actually is part of you. Just that I didn't do. No situation. No condition warrant that for you to come out. That is why God will have to always pass you through all kinds of challenge. All kinds of situations so that the best of you can come out. Because when you pass through those things, and you face through that challenge, for you to be able to break down again, something greater than that has to come upon you. And for that to come upon you, you might have been able to survive for the next 15 years before that will come upon you. You have never experienced criticism as a minister before. You don't need it now. You are very careful, that's good. But a time is going to come, that will begin to come. So God will have to ensure that a time is going to come when all everything you think that is fighting great will begin to fight you. It's a level. And that is why a lot of times, several kind of encounter initiating to new plane in the spirit. When God wants to elevate you, he releases a level, another kind of encounter. But the encounter can never be released upon you until you partner with the spirit of truth. Partnering with the Spirit of God is the greatest advantage you can ever have. There lies your strength of prayer. I told you, you can never pray to be intimate with God. It's a waste of time. Your prayer is a byproduct of your intimacy. The way you pray, I will know whether you know God. The way you pray, I will know whether you study. The way you pray, I will know whether you actually spend time with God. Blasting in tongues can never make God to be intimate with you. No. You remain with God inside, partnering with His Spirit. So that by the time you come out, you begin to pray. You are praying from the energy of the strength of your intimacy with him. And as long as that strength of the energy of intimacy is there, you will continually to glide. But many of you, you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And because of the deprivation of the relationship you have with the Holy Spirit, that is why you don't have the strength to advance in Christianity. The people that fill us with the Holy Spirit do not do us well. They just lay us upon us and say, go and continue to speak in tongues. They never told us that the spirit that came upon us did not just come to just make us speak in tongues. He demanded more things other than speaking in tongues. He wanted us to know him. He wanted us to relate with him. He wanted us to understand him. He wanted a lot of things beyond speaking in tongues. And that is why when you begin to pray in tongues, you begin to have all kinds of experience. Then you begin to wonder, though they gave you a certificate for a class you never attended. Then now you begin to ask all kinds of questions you're supposed to know before. Hey, are you following me? The way you're looking at me. They are getting me confused. Okay, let me let's 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 go slowly. It is well. You must understand that being part of diverse grace is an advantage. Why? Because God does not work with a superstar. The last time a superstar came was Jesus Christ. When everybody wants to make him a superstar, God kill you. If you try to be a superstar, God will kill you. So that many others can rise. I get what I'm saying now. 
How God advanced the kingdom, the Bible says, by what? The blood of the martyr is the seed of the gospel. You must be willing to die. Superstars in the kingdom are men that die. They don't live to be pleased. They live and they die. The kind of living you are living to be celebrated is a waste of time. Anyone that you see that bear relevance in God in the kingdom is dying every day. I told you, you celebrate Joshua Salman, celebrate Adam Meosai, celebrate Bishop Redepo, go and ask their family what they have to go through for what they are doing. The truth is this, this will cost you a lot, but you must be willing to pay the price at all costs because it is the part of glory. He says just because of the glory that he see ahead and the price and the crown that makes him to endure what he's going through. If not, no man, no man will do. No man. Do you think people are not tired? Someone told me she don't want to answer the call of God upon her life simply because it's going to cost her a lot. I say, well, if you refuse to answer the call of God upon your life, you answer the call of the devil upon your life. And I don't know which one will cost you better. Every one of them has a yoke. Does that another one, the yoke is easy and is light. And he will supply strength for you to help you in the yoke. The devil will yoke you enough and ensure that the yoke kills you to the end. When you begin to partner with the Holy Spirit, you journey from visitation to encounter, from encounter to impartation, from impartation to habitation. Huh? I don't have time. You listen to the message. The Bible speaking says he put eternity in the heart of man and he is the one that has apportioned the boundaries of our own habitation. That's to tell you, to let you to understand that whether you like it or not, God appropriately, because of the eternity he has put in your heart, he has apportioned the boundaries of your habitation where you will be at the time. Because of the eternity in your, in your heart is what makes you to be here at this moment. And because of the eternity in your heart is what will make you to be where you will be tomorrow. And if you are not where you are supposed to be tomorrow, eternity in your heart will no longer become eternity. The Bible speaking said that God encountered men according to the journey in the eternity he has put in their heart because there lies the apportioning of the boundary where they can be habitated in the spirit. You don't even know whether you'll be here. You may never be able to understand how this thing works. You don't even know where you'll be in the next 10 years. You don't know. But because of the eternity in your heart, you are sure of the guardianship of the spirit that becomes your consolation. A lot of time we set plans. You know, psychology people will tell you how to set plans and set goals. Those things are very good. But I have known God to be a goal scatterer. God will always scatter your plans. I don't know how he does it, but he does it very good. You must understand that you must be flexible with God, malleable and doctored. You don't give him a standard, allow him to set the standard. Your plans are good, but if you bring him into it, sometimes he will edit a lot of it. You must always understand that if God has not been editing your plans, it's because you have refused to allow him entrance into it. Because your plans are good, but they can never be perfect. What's the last time you set a plan and it worked very well without God? It will never. I have had a lot of plans to be the richest whatsoever. How many times have I failed? My plans were well calculated, but all of them continued to fail. The last time we did a business with my friend, it went away like a bag of cash. Kratos with all his prayer came and brought another business to us. It left like wind. Paul was upon his head. Paul fell as though we should kill him. I said, sir, these are the ideas and the philosophies of man. There is no system that is guaranteed upon the face of the earth. Just when you thought you were about to make the one million, that is when the devil will come to let you understand that this is my system. One million go. And God will say, I did not go there. I didn't send you. Your plans were very good. You calculate according to mathematics. The compound interest. What the, what the other interest again? That by this time, in the next five years, it should lead to this. That system can crash. That system doesn't belong to God. It's not the system of the heavens. Make your plans very good. But learn to survive by the economy of heaven. That one will always be to your advantage. I get what I'm saying now. Many more times, just when you enter something that it goes away. I to look as though you are actually the Jonah in the ship. <laughs> oh my God. The Lord help you. <laughs> when you begin to partner with the Holy Spirit, He will begin to reveal Jesus to you. Then Jesus in turn will begin to reveal 
God to you, then God will begin to reveal yourself to you. One of the greatest reasons why you don't know yourself is because you don't partner with God. You don't discover purpose. God revealed to you your purpose. I know you have read. What's his name again? Rick Warren. I love him. But there is no purpose outside of God. <laughs> there is no what? I know a lot of people that have given them that book, they came back not discovering their purpose. And now they realize that Rick Warren is not my God. You see, that's your problem now. You believe that I insulted him now. Because you are in the flesh. I told you there is nothing that is good enough if it is not in God. The parameter where which I have used to encounter God may not be the one you will use. As you journey via those minds, learn to be flexible enough to allow God to bleed upon you. I know you have read five love languages. Well, those may not work for certain people. And that doesn't mean that those people are wrong or they don't, they can't love. A lady told me that. What kind of a man is this? As a young woman. Some people's psychology don't work on them. You must understand that the economy of heaven is your greatest survival skills. And when God encounters you, He will give you a principle. He will give you a law. Something to do that can never crash. God can tell you, begin to sell, sell face masks. At that time, there was no corona. He will say, prepare 1,000 face masks. But you will feel that foolishness. I learned about the guy that began his pure water as he bought water business. He started like joke. When God tells you to do something, you will discover that God can give you the greatest business idea. It's not what you will read in school of money. I agree with those things. But let me understand that I may do something and succeed. If you do, you may fail woefully. I know a friend of mine that failed because this guy started a shop. She too, she wants to start a shop. As I'm talking to you now, she's out of business. In fact, she's in debt. We are trying to see how we can be able to pay some of the debt. And we still have to let us learn to survive that you survive by God's supply. You must understand that the system of the economy you used to read, I know you read the book, How to Keep Marriage, 10 Steps to Keep Marriage. Finish reading those books, you discover it doesn't work. <coughs> 13 ways to see vision. When you finish, you discover it does not work. While I begin to join in God, I read all kinds of books. I discovered that all of them ended at the full stop and I was more confused before I started. Those things are good, but you must be flexible enough to understand that the journey goes beyond that. It has to be organic. There is no journey in God that is inorganic. There is what you call organic chemistry and what? Inorganic chemistry. I know you should go and find out the difference. I don't have that time. Our encounter is what? Organic in nature. When God releases an encounter, it's organic. And when something is organic, it's what? Alive. One of the reasons why we say we should return back to organic things is because those things are alive and they can give you life. Many of you have been eating a lot of synthetic things. That's why cancer comes after you in the, at the age of 40. When you feed on organic things, you will survive a very long time. There is organic Christianity. There is inorganic Christianity. A lot of people that you see that are fighting the move of God today, they are all inorganic Christianity. They cannot develop, they cannot advance. They know the Bible more than you, they read all the books. I went to a man's I went to a man house. I saw a shelf full of all kinds of books. But you put out darkness. And I realized that he's walking after the order of the inorganic Christianity. He has never had an encounter in his life before. So he does not know that there is a structure in God that ensures that the man advances. God help us. Encounter. Is what will include you among the council of the Godhead. Encounter is what we have had in practice. Encounter is a spiritual educational system. At every day at time, God will take kinds of encounter to ensure that you grow spiritually. He's the one that does that. You don't grow spiritually reading a book. You may not even grow spiritually actually praying. You don't believe what I'm telling you. They are just what I, what I call ingredient. But do you know that I give it? I don't know how to cook. You can give me the best ingredient and I will still do rubbish. Not because the ingredient is wrong, but everything is wrong with me. Is that true? My friend, Abi Odin, we have been roommate for the past more than 10 years. There was a day he felt that he needed to help my infirmity. So he decided that I must start learning how to cook. Any day I cook. We pray the Lord to help us. Sometimes we dazzle into his sister's house. Where is Bosse? That lady has fed us a lot. We go to the house to go and eat better food. 
that will come back and allow his, his dogs to eat the other one. The truth is this. Nothing may be wrong with the angry, everything may be wrong with you. And that is the reason why you do not grow. Paul said, I, Paul, a foundational builder laid the foundation. Apollos water is God that gives the increase. God will come and check, check you. The ingredient may be very okay, but you may be very, very wrong. The first thing is to ensure that you are right. If you are right, even the ingredient, you know, there are people that you give them some very, very busy ingredients, you see, do a very good food. I don't know. Happy went and bought, we bought carrots, bought all kinds of things. I began to cut them anyhow. I put this. I, I, oh my God. The Lord deliver you from my foot. <laughs> but I need to understand that these things go beyond the word inorganic way. It has to be organic. 